Let me read to you a passage from the ninth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 27 to 31. It's the Gospel for Friday of the first week in Advent. St. Matthew writes, As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him, and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith will it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him all over that region. That's from Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 to 31. What does it suggest to us? Well, Advent is the season of the liturgical year when we think of Christ's coming into our lives. And the Church presents for our contemplation various Gospel scenes which illustrate features of His coming. Let us then place ourselves in the scene of today's Gospel in which our Lord comes into the lives of two blind men. We are told that He, and I quote, went on from there, and two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. Now let us remember on another occasion when the blind man Bartimaeus, sitting by the roadside begging, heard that Jesus was passing by and immediately and vociferously called out to him that he show mercy. The prayer was the same as that of the two narrated in today's Gospel. The crowds could not stop him shouting out for Jesus. As soon as the sound of his cries reached the ears of Jesus, he stopped and ordered that the man be brought to him. That is to say, Christ responded immediately to the blind man's appeal. He was brought before him, he was asked what he wanted, and then immediately healed according to his faith. That blind man whose name the author of the Gospel knew well, followed Jesus on the way. Our Lord had gained yet another disciple, who perhaps was known in the infant church. The two blind men in our Gospel today that I read earlier also appeal for mercy. The implication is that in their case, our Lord did not stop but carried on, for we read that they followed him, and it was only when he went indoors that the two blind men got to him and presented their petition. Our Lord asked if they believed he could do this for them. At their saying they did believe this, he immediately cured them. The point, though, is that our Lord's response is different in each case. In the one there was no delay, in the other there was a delay, requiring persistence on the part of the two blind men. We remember our Lord and the Canaanite woman in Matthew chapter 15. She pursued him with her cries on behalf of her daughter, but he did not answer her a word. Finally, she cornered him, we might say, and had it out. Our Lord praised her for her great faith and persistence, despite the initial rebuff, and sent her off, her daughter healed. Two things we are surely reminded of by our Gospel passage today. The first thing is that Christ comes bringing the mercy of God. The entire scriptures reveal that God is a God of mercy. He is rich in mercy. The world and human life surges and throbs with need and suffering. It hurts, it limps, it struggles and it staggers along. The world, we might say, needs a walking stick and two crutches besides. Human life presents itself as a constant patch-up job. The car is always breaking down, the lights are always failing. Why is this so? Why is this beautiful world and this grand thing we call the life of man so often gasping for breath? We would never know the answer to this question were it not revealed. The fundamental reason for the suffering that plagues the life of man is man's own original and personal sin. Because of sin, he is bereft and he is adrift. 
But there is another thing that is revealed, and it is that the Creator is rich in mercy. He is a God who is full of compassion. It is Christ who reveals the love and power of God, and this loving power, in the face of human suffering, reveals itself in mercy. Jesus Christ is our merciful Lord. To him, to Jesus, we can say with the two blind men, as with Bartimaeus, Christ, that is, son of David, have mercy. And the church makes this prayer of the two blind men of our gospel today, and that of Bartimaeus, her own prayer at the start of every Mass, during the penitential rite. We all say, Christ have mercy. I remember watching a Polish movie, and in it, a Polish Christian died under a hail of arrows from the Islamic fighters. As he went down, he repeated out loud, Christ have mercy. In all our needs, we ought turn to Christ, the incarnate God, appealing for mercy and confident in his power and love. But there is a second point. Let us remember that we are not dealing with magic. It is God to whom we address ourselves, and he is free, and he knows what is best for us. He kept going when the two in the gospel today appealed to him. They had to follow and keep asking. So did the Canaanite woman. They had to pray constantly and, despite appearances, not lose heart. The test of our faith will come when we ask and do not seem immediately to receive. What would have happened if the two blind men had given up on our Lord when he did not stop for them, and, indeed, left them outside, as it were, when he entered the house? What would have happened if they had thought that he was not interested in helping them, or that, in fact, he could not? They would not have been healed. Their faith in him was tested by the delay and by his seeming lack, lack of attention. Sadly, though, once they received the answer to their prayer, they did not respect our Lord's strict command to keep silence about it, but went and broadcast it everywhere. It looks as if they did not have the faith that led to discipleship, as did Bartimaeus, who followed our Lord along the road. Let us pray with persistent and obedient faith, and Christ will hear our prayer in the way that is best for us, and most in accord with his saving plan.